Are you looking to monitor your home's energy usage? Do you want to cut down on your energy bills by knowing what is left on and what's consuming energy in your house? If so, stay tuned, and today we're going to take a look at the Emporia View Whole House Energy Meter. Hey everyone, it's Ryan with This Smart House again, and today we're taking a look at the Emporia Energy View Smart Home Meter. Now this is a whole house smart energy meter. So what that means is this clamps into your electrical panel, see what energy is being consumed at any point in your house. What's cool about this one is instead of relying on machine learning or algorithms, it actually has the option to add additional clamps to your different breakers in your house to tell you how much energy is being consumed by different parts of the house. So for example, for your HVAC system, you would set up one uh, clamp on there and be able to tell exactly how much energy your HVAC system is using. So let's take a look at what comes in the box. Now you've got the actual sensor. This has places for up to three clamps uh, that for the incoming. So this supports, so this, com this supports multiple different configuration methods which we'll go to here in a second. So then this box here contains the two large current transformers that clamp over your main incoming power supply, a wire harness to wire in the main sensor into a breaker panel, and then it has a externally mountable Wi-Fi antenna. Now this can go through one of the numerous knockouts on the side of your panel and then you'd be able to take the uh, Wi-Fi signal outside of the panel, which is a great idea because without that you might have interference issues. Obviously you're inside of a metal panel with surrounded by a bunch of electrical wiring. A couple of additional pieces of wiring and some wire nuts. Then one of the options that you can get with this particular kit is you can buy the sensor all by itself with just the main accessories or you can buy it bundled with either eight or 16 of these current transformer clamps for various parts of your house. So I purchased the one that has eight of these little mini 50 amp clamps. So these can, can read a circuit that's up to a 50 amp circuit, which is most uh, main breakers in your house. So you basically wanna select certain rooms. So what I, I'd recommend is going ahead and taking a picture of your panel and marking on the picture which rooms that you care about. So say, you know, you don't care about a child's bedroom, but you do care about your kitchen, you care about your garage, your HVAC, your laundry room, those sort of things. So you can add those clamps onto there. So like I said, I've got eight clamps to install on this particular system, um, but you can get the 16 version if you'd like. All right, so now that we've seen what comes in the box, let's talk about what features there are for this particular sensor. Now, there are a lot of different varieties of these type of sensors that are available for your house. I actually have a very old whole house energy monitor already set up and it's actually been on the fritz for the last year. It's the old TED 5000, the energy detective. And I actually brought it from my old house and brought it to this new house we moved in a few years ago. You can get other versions. Uh, AOTech makes one that's Z-Wave that will actually connect over and transmit over Z-Wave. You can also get some of the more expensive ones. There's one by, I believe, Square D and there's also one by Sense that uses machine learning to figure out what different things are on and off. But I've heard mixed reviews on those sort of things. So I wanted to go with one that had the actual sensor so I can tell exactly what's coming from each of the rooms and then be able to tell uh, in my dashboard what exactly is being used. Now my house, I of course being a smart house and a lot of uh, computers in it, I have a lot of energy use and I really want to cut down on that because according to my electrical company, I am above average on my energy consumption, which with a smart house, you'd hope that'd be less. So I'm going to use this to figure out what exactly I'm consuming and what things I can use to save money. So let's talk about what features are available on this one. So um, like I said before, now this comes with three different configurations for monitoring incoming power. You can either monitor a single phase up to 240 volts AC, two phases or multi-phase, which is most, most residential houses, uh, 120 or 240. You can also do uh, three phase, uh, a four, 415 of a Y or 240, uh, you cannot do delta three phase, but you can do Y three phase. So if that's relevant to you, you'll know what that means. But for most people, it doesn't matter because most houses are actually by phase or two phase. Uh, the kit comes with the two current transformers, which are used to clamp on each of the two phases that come into the house. You can watch. They also, you can also purchase this uh, and use it for uh, monitoring your incoming on solar. As an additional, they have kits for the solar, um, but that requires a separate sensor for that. So you'd have one for your outgoing, one for your incoming. Now, like I said before, it does come, you actually can do up to 16 sensors per one of these. So if you do decide, you can upgrade later on and add up to, you know, add an additional kit if you'd like to do that. These are rated at 200 amps incoming. Each of the smaller CTs are rated at 50 amps. Now, as we said before, um, it, how it gets out to the application. To monitor the system, the sensor connects over Wi-Fi to their cloud app to be able to upload data. Now it does have onboard storage in case you lose internet connection. It can store the one second resolution data up to three hours onboard. It can store the one minute resolution up to 
seven days and it can store the one hour resolution data indefinitely. So this means that depending on how long the system is disconnected, it can store a small amount of data at different varying resolutions. So you'll never lose all the data, but you might lose some of the higher resolution data if you really care about the one second intervals. Obviously, if you're connected to the internet, that's not gonna be a problem. Now, the rest of the features we'll talk about when we get to the application, um, because they're easier to show with the app open up. But before we get into the installation, there's a couple of items I wanna point out. One being some safety items. Obviously, to do this, you're gonna have to get into your breaker panel, and if you're not comfortable with that, please consult a professional electrician to do this work. In most houses, you can't disconnect the panel entirely. So the top lugs in the panel, where you're gonna be connecting these current transformers, will be live. Let's go ahead and get into the install. So the first step before any electrical project is that you need to get into the breaker panel and turn off every breaker to ensure that you've got a clean disconnect. After you've done that, flip the master breaker at the top of the panel to disconnect power to the entire panel. Then once that's done, go ahead and remove the screws around the outside of the panel. Then once you have the faceplate of the panel off, you want to go through and just do a spot check to make sure that there is no power going to any of the breakers. You can confirm the, that the top breakers are still live by using a non-contact voltage probe as I'm doing here. Now, if you need to, here this is an example of an empty location in your breaker panel where you can install new breakers, power the sensor. Now, in my panel, I decided to go with the recommended method to use two existing breakers. And to do this, I had to remove the existing wiring from the breaker and add in that additional piece of wiring and then connect one of the power legs from the sensor to both small piece of wire coming out of the breaker and the original circuit that was in the breaker from before. You see here, I wired in the two pieces of wire, wire netted that together and then sent those out to the two existing points in the breaker. And then we've wired in the harness that comes with the system. Now the next step in this configuration would be to wire both the white and blue wires into the neutral bus bar on my panel. Now this wasn't a great angle, so I apologize for the quality. So we've connected the Emporia to the wiring harness. Now it's time to wire in the current transformers. So we open up the CT clamp and then on the bottom, we note the K through the L indentation on here. And that indicates the direction we wanna go. So the, the L should face towards the meter, the K should face towards the breaker. So in this case, they wanna face away. So again, where it says K through L, we want that to face away from the breaker panel. So I'm gonna go up here where it's insulated, go ahead and wrap and connect it. And wrap the wire in a minute. So there's the first one. And noting the direction, we'll go ahead and clip that over and keep our hands clear. So, so make sure we leave the insulation plug on the third phase, remove the first two, connect them in. So now we're gonna install the Wi-Fi antenna in the side of the panel. So we need to locate a compatible sized knockout and go ahead and punch that through. Then we'll place the antenna in the slot and press it in until it locks into place. So there we go. Now when connecting the antenna to the base unit, make sure you pull the cover away from the connector and then screw it down until it's tight. Then replace the cover over the connector to protect it from interference. Now it's always a good idea to keep the panel close by so you can refer to which circuit is which room in your house. So as before, if we're connecting these, we wanna make sure that the L points towards the load and the K points towards the breaker. So in this case, the cord will always be to the left. Quick note about multi-phase. Now, if you wanna interconnect with one of these multiple phase breakers, the instructions say just attach one, one of the CTs to one leg, and then you can multiply those in the application. There will be a future update to allow you to connect two to one phase and then merge those together in the application. But for now, let's, we just wanna attach one. So I'm gonna attach, this is to my air conditioner. I'm attaching one here. Here we are with our completed panel. We've got the main incoming CTs at the top. And then we've got all of the smaller CTs on the circuits that we care about. And we have all of the wiring pulled out. Now we need to clean the wiring up and connect these in. All right, now we've applied a little bit of cable management. So now it's time to go ahead and attach the adapters to each of these individual plugs. Make sure you have any unused plugs still covered with these caps for safety reasons. All right, now we've got our completed setup here. You know, it's ugly, but it works. And it's a good idea to go ahead and take a picture. Take a picture of your entire system, so that way you can document where each of the CTs are. Now, I connected my CTs in order. So it's one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. And I did that so that way it's easy to remember when I look at the panel which ones they are. And again, it's a good idea to take a picture of the panel and mark which one of these you want done. Now that the installation is complete, go ahead and put the panel back on and you can turn power back on to the master breaker and all of the sub breakers in the panel. All right, uh, now that the installation is finished, we've got the power restored to the house and the panel has been put back together. Let's go ahead and get into the application and get it set up and show you how to designate the zones. So I've got the Emporia app here, um, which is available from iOS or Android app stores. So I need to create an account because I don't already have one. So we will just get this filled out and skip through it. So we're gonna set up an Emporia View Gen 2. I do not have solar generation, unfortunately. Bluetooth is on, I'm within about 10 feet, so I may have to move over there. Okay, there it is. So now it's gonna to connect to it over Wi-Fi and do the typical self-contained Wi-Fi access point and set it up on our, on our internal Wi-Fi here in the house. We gotta select, remember this is 2.4 only, so you can't select a five gigahertz network. All right, so I've got my network details in here. Let it connect, okay. Uh-oh. So apparently, uh, one of my sensors popped out of the top, so let me go fix that real quick. Um, I went ahead and fixed, sure enough, one of the CTs had popped out the top of there, so I went ahead and fixed that real quick. So I can click fix the issue retry. Now it's gonna go ahead, go through the process again to, to verify everything's good. All right, so we're gonna give this one a name and select my time zone, which is correct. And it's gonna go to update firmware, which is common on most of these sort of things. There we go. Now the device is all set up. Now we gotta go in and configure it. So we see all of the different CTs, wonder why they, oh, it puts them in order by usage. So what you see from the home screen here, you can see each of your different circuits and their combined usage. And then down here at the bottom, it shows you the balance, which is things that are not being detected by the system itself. So this would be things that are not accounted for by these individual circuits. Right, now that we have the app set up on the phone, let's head back upstairs and let's take a tour through the application and how to use it. Now let's get into some of the basic features of the app. And I will not be covering how to add this to Home Assistant this week. I actually have an entire video planned on how to add this to Home Assistant along with setting up the new energy dashboard. So look for that here in the coming weeks. But let's go ahead and explore what's available in the built-in Emporia app. So as you can see, I went ahead and I've renamed all of my different circuits in my house. And you can see right now the air conditioning is the largest consumer of all the energy in the house, taking about three kilowatt hours just for itself. And you'll see right below that, there's the furnace slash sump. Well, this is a circuit in my basement that has a sump pump, the furnace, which is also contains the fan for the air conditioner and furnace, and also a TV that's down in the basement. So that's usually my second largest one when the air conditioning is running. Then we got the office, which I'm sitting in right now, and that actually has quite a high usage, which is one of the things that I really am gonna to try to focus on. One thing I have noticed is the bulbs that are in my bathroom in here are incandescent and consume a ton of electricity. So I'll be swapping those over to LED very shortly. But of course, in here I've got my editing workstation, the video light, and the 3D printer all in the same room. So this room's gonna consume a lot of energy as well. And then we have the cooktop and microwave circuits, the dryer, which would be another large consumer when it's in use, the oven, another big consumer when it's in use, and then the rest of the kitchen, the, the the rest of the kitchen circuits. So this is, I think, where the I have a little drink fridge down there, those sort of things. So you'll see all of those in here. And then as I mentioned before, the balance would be the other things that we don't account for because they're on other circuits. Now, when I do set this up in the home assistant dashboard, I do have other I do have other energy monitors throughout the house connected to smart switches that I will be feeding data from into home assistant. So I'll be able to count for the majority of that using home assistant. So if we look, we can see day usage throughout the day. Um, one second, so you know, instantly, over the last minute, over the last hour, over the last day, how much total uh, energy we've consumed. You can also click on any of the categories above and it will show you a graph of that particular area. So here's the one for the office over the last 24 hours. We can go back home and I can click on any of these and it will show me the usage over whatever that particular trend is. So I don't really have anything because I just installed it a couple days ago. So well, you can be able to trend as you make changes to your house and bring those into control. You can then go back and, and trend those and see how you're doing as far as uh, turning down your consumption. Now, uh, to configure those different circuits with names, you click on the three lines over here and go to manage devices, click on the name of your sensor, and then you can go through here and name each of your individual circuits and identify what type of load is on those circuits. So it has this nice little drop down, which then will change the icon next to the element, the icon next to the circuit, so that way you can tell visually what is what. 
Also, here's that multiplier we talked about. Because the dryer and the air conditioner and the oven are all 240 appliances, this system would only account for half of the load because you're only looking at one of the two legs of the 240 circuit. But in the application, you can go ahead and set a multiplier. So for all of those two breaker 240 appliances, I've added a multiplication factor of two to account for that missing leg that I'm not monitoring right now. Once you have your device configured, which if you scroll down here to the bottom, you can also clear the device out if you happen to sell it or reset your Wi-Fi um, by clicking the wrench here at the bottom. So you can also in here, uh, if you did have any of the compatible thermostats, you can add those into here, which right now it's only the Ecobee, Honeywell and the Emerson. Uh, they don't have Nest in here, so I can't use it. You can also add in uh, if you happen to have any of those smart plugs, you can control them from this app too and see that usage in the application. Uh, they also do sell EV chargers, which is kind of cool. So if you are a person who's got a Tesla or another EV, you can use the app to schedule when you charge it and then tie that all together. So if you have a peak demand charge, you can actually clip that and tell it to not charge your EV at peak demand time. So that's pretty nice. You can go through and export all your data directly to CSV if you want to. So if you needed to actually... Uh, trend this data in Excel, you could do that. You could do that. Uh, you can also modify what notifications. So if you wanted to go through, and I haven't set all this up yet, uh, where it will basically tell you, hey, you're using a lot of load right now, or hey, now's a good time to turn this appliance on, or uh, you know, you're know, you in the middle of a peak area, so you might want to drop this down or turn off your dryer so you're not consuming as much energy and not being charged as much. And then under the three dots, there's this household info section where you can go through and identify different information for the app to be able to use. So the number of residents in the house, what type of house you have, your heat sources, your air conditioning, if you've got a swimming pool or a hot tub, uh, and electric vehicle. But you can also go in here and set your electric rate. So if you wanted to see a cost of what, how much you're actually being charged by your electrical provider, has a neat little component provided by NREL where you can go in here and actually tell by your location what your current rate is. Click on the three dots and go down to household info where you can click select utility rate, click on the name of your device, and then click rate based on your location. So this will allow you to select your location and then pick up how much your current rate package is. So now I should be able to see a utility rate on all of my items in here. So I should be able to click and click dollars. And now I can see exactly how much I'm spending every minute of the day on electricity. So that's a nice, nice feature as well. Now, again, there's these energy management features that I have not got into yet, where you can go in and select uh, notifications, or even if you had uh, a compatible switch turning off loads during peak season. So um, this is something I'll get into a little bit later once I have a chance to play with it a little bit, but that's a feature that's uh, available in the app as well. So. All right, so let me give you my final thoughts on the product. Now, I have been tracking my energy usage for the last decade or so. Uh, I, because I've had problems with my old device and that data wasn't as readily available, I, I really haven't been using it. I really haven't been actioning it. I just got a raw number, so many kilowatts used. Just like if you were to go outside and read the side of your utility meter, it doesn't give you much good information. You just know you're using a lot of energy. But because this product allows you to look at specific circuits and tell what's going on on those circuits, that I think gives me a lot more data that I can actually use. Like I mentioned before, I'm gonna go through and replace a bunch of light bulbs because man, those consume a lot of energy and my kids and wife leave them on all the time. So um, I really think that that's gonna be a good usage for me. Now, this versus something like Sense or the Square D product, I really haven't used this before, but I've read a lot of reviews on those and it seems like that machine learning where it tries to figure out the loads isn't as reliable as something like this where you actually can meter the load and know exactly what's consuming it. So I think that's a better deal to get that type of data and not really have to guess at it. Plus this product is half the price of the sense. So I think overall, I'm very happy with my purchase and we'll see what I can do with that data going forward. Now, real quick, this is part one of my energy series. Part two is coming out next week and that is gonna be on how to pick up information from your utility meters using a software defined radio device. Now this is a pretty cool project and I kind of alluded to it on my last live stream that I'm able to grab data out of the air and be able to tell what my utility meters are showing me and bring that into Home Assistant. So we'll take a look at that next week. And then after that, we'll be going into just how to set up the energy dashboard in Home Assistant and taking this product and adding it into Home Assistant using a third party utility. So uh, please stay tuned for that. So hopefully this video was useful for you. Uh, if it was, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to purchase this product, I have an affiliate link down in the description below. And if, if you're watching this the week after I released it, you can click here to go to the rest of the videos in this, the energy series, or click here to subscribe to the channel. Thanks again and have a great rest of your day.